Congressman Allison, we so, have... Let's, let's talk. What you got? Great. We have two questions from the audience for you. Congressman, thank you so much for coming out today. Um, I'm Irina Alexander, Chair of Students for Sensible Drug Policies Board of Directors, Students for Sensible Drug Policies Board of Directors, and an issue that um, vastly impacts every other issue that's been talked about today, immigration, environment, e e the economy, human rights, I mean, any single issue, you can always connect back to the war on drugs. Unfortunately, the war on drugs is something that a lot of people, including many progressive movements are a little afraid to talk about still. There's still a lot of stigma around this drug issue. So uh, I'm wondering how, how we can you know, fight against that barrier and really bring this conversation to the table and make some change. Well, one of the things, when you want to talk about the war on drugs, you've got to talk about how you don't uh, try to address a medical issue within the frame of a war. Rarely is war very, very rare occasions in which war is a useful metaphor for anything other than an actual war, which almost none of them need to be fought. I, you know, I, I said almost. You know, we should stand up against Hitler. We should stand up against, you know, there's times when we, people have to fight. We should stand up for the Union against the Confederacy. But almost never are they worthwhile. Certainly Iraq is an example of something never should have happened. Add Vietnam to that, you know, and there are others as well. So this war thing has got to be gotten away with. Look, people who are addicted to drugs are dealing with a medical issue. You cannot incarcerate your way out of a social and medical problem. And we tried to, we tried to, and we ended up having more young black men in prison than in college. And we ended up, and we ended up throwing away vast amounts of human potential. So look. We've got, you know, the Congress made some progress. We, we, it used to be that if you had one gram of, of, of uh, crack cocaine, you'd have to have 100 grams of powder cocaine in order to get the same sentence. Of course, people of color had the crack and whites had the powder, so there was this disproportionate incarceration rates. We lowered that to 18 to 1, which is progress, but it ain't equality. So... Uh, and then all over the country, we got these felon disenfranchisement um, uh, laws that like make it so that you can't vote uh, if you've had a felony or you can't vote till you're off paper. I mean, we need to have, I mean, there are two states where you never lose your right to vote, uh, Vermont and Maine. And, and, and why should you lose your citizenship? You're still a citizen even if you have, uh, and we also have to introduce some of those, some of y'all who either whether you're a theist or non-theist, whether you're a person of faith or not, you know, we also should have this idea of redemption, you know, that you're not the worst thing that you ever did. People ought to be able to come back into society and be productive, right? So fight for this. Fight for this idea. Talk about the enormous expense. Talk about the moral implications of, of, of denying redemption. And, talk, and ask people why they're into this punitive thing where they just want to stick it to people forever and ever and ever. And, and, and so it's uh, tied to this idea of one America. It's tied to this idea that we're all in this thing together. So thank you for asking that. Keep up your battle. And uh, no, let me just stop my own. See, I make mistakes too. Keep up your struggle. <laughs> and uh, count on me to help you with that. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll answer more quickly so I don't uh, take up all the time. Good afternoon, Congressman. Thanks for being here. Yes, ma'am. My question is, how can we go forward in an America for equality when women are consistently paid 80 cents to every man's dollar? Right. We make up a minority of Congress and we make up the majority of America. How? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to ask talented women to run for office. <laughs> because statistics show, statistics show that Talented women, uh, or women who want, you know, want to don't run because they're not asked. But any old guy who is not, doesn't have any talent, he feels he can be the president tomorrow. <laughs> so this is a conditioning thing. This is how we're raised and socialized. So we've got all men and women need to need to approach women and talk about the importance of women, of female leadership, of equality, and and the other thing we need to do is we need to confront this idea of, of income and wealth inequality. 
Because, you know, and, and we can use law to solve this problem. I mean, the, the, the right wing Supreme Court tried to deal a blow to women's uh, financial well being by, by telling Lily Ledbetter that even though she was, in fact, discriminated against on the basis of her sex, she wasn't going to get her money because she didn't file her lawsuit quick enough. Well, she didn't even know they discriminated against her for years. And so the U.S. Congress, under, under progressive leadership, passed a law giving her her right to sue, which, te which proves elections matter. Don't ever doubt that. Now we got another blow from the right-wing Supreme Court, which decertified the class of women who were suing Walmart for their sexist practices. And you should know, in this case, Walmart versus Dukes, that women are paid about $1.16 less per hour less than men at Walmart. Women are, uh, have much more seniority overall at Walmart than men do, and yet they're paid less. This is naked sexism, and all of us need to fight against it. Now, let me just tell the men in this, thing, in this audience one thing. It's something you should know. That in the age of the two-income the two earner household, Sex discrimination means your family income is a lot lower. You understand that? Sex discrimination means that your children have less family income to buy pencils and pens. And it, 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 is, it is devastating, and I would say morally reprehensible, to pay women less for the work that they do. But it has real implications for working families. And so let's continue the battle. I recently hosted a forum in my district called Women's Rights in the Era of Extremism. And this is an era of extremism. These same people who want to shrink government till you can drown it in a bathtub also want uh, mom or to get back in the kitchen and take her shoes off and get pregnant. You understand? They, they are offended by a strong, powerful women. And here's the sad part. Some of them are women themselves. Michelle Bachman being an example. So, so let's stand up. Let's stand up for women's rights. And, and brothers, don't leave the sisters out there. We've got to be in this thing together. Thank you very Thank much. You.